And we're excited to have, welcome on board, team number 1339, Angel Botics. We were just on here a couple of weeks ago showing off the robot, and we're going to be checking out uh, some of the progress they've been working on. Angel Box coming in from Denver, Colorado. And I'm very excited to, to speak uh, with this team again and see what their progress is, where they're looking at going, showing off some cool CAD, I know, uh, some vision systems as well, too. So uh, we have Diego, Ethan, Julia, and Nick on. Uh, Diego, why don't you start and introduce yourself real quick. Let us know your role on the team. Yeah, hi, I'm Diego, and I am the lead programmer. Hey, hi, I'm Ethan. I'm also a programmer. Um, I'm Julia. I'm team captain. Uh, and I'm Nick. I'm the strategy and design lead. Well, welcome to you all, and uh, looking forward to seeing where your progress is for things. Uh, you know, looking where we last left you off and, and seeing some of the things that you're bringing here, I'm very excited to, to talk about what you have brought uh, here today. So what do you want to start out with? And we'll just kind of dive right in and start breaking it down. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Well, welcome, welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Striker Careers. Striker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. So for programming, we've been working on kind of two separate paths. So one of them is uh, during teleop, uh, we want our drivers to be able to see what the robot is seeing. Right, so this year the field is a little different where there's quite a big obstacle in the center. So when the robot is on the other side, we're gonna have pretty bad vision, at least for the driver. And so our solution for that was to add a camera on the front and the back of the robot and be able to switch between those so that the driver can see what they're doing in front with the intake or in the back with the shooter. And so we also have a demo here. So you can see on the right is gonna be the back camera. It's a 360 or 180 degree and it's wide angle. And the front is a limelight um, for targeting, although we're not gonna be doing that this year. And so you can see here now, we're switching between forward view and back view. And then with it, we have a small um, view of the other side too, to check up. And we'll be switching the controls as well um, to allow it to be easier when he's driving on the other side and can't see the robot as much. So is your limelight being used just for a camera then? Yeah, so the nice thing about the limelight is you can use it as a camera, but also through network tables, you can ask it to have a, a backup camera. So we plug in the 180 degree camera through USB, and then we can update the network tables and get the different pipeline. And yeah, we just so, so you guys are you guys are running your both cameras through the limelight as the interface to right. the robot, right? Yeah. And that, and are you guys uh, just just asking? Are you guys making sure that you're uh, you're managing your bandwidth so that you're not uh, over overloading the field in terms of uh, <laughs> frame rate and because uh, I don't know what the limit is. It's like six megabit or is your is your robot limit? And that's what's nice because we're doing it through the just the one camera too, and switching between there it'll reduce how much bandwidth is we're using rather than having two different USB cameras. Um, and switching between the streams there, it can often take up more and be a bit more um, taxing. So what, are you getting any sort of feedback then otherwise, or is it strictly being used as a visual uh, device? Yeah, for teleop, it's only visual. So right now we're not planning on having any vision for at least teleop, probably autonomous as well. And uh, so what's, what's the driving factor behind that? So I know that uh, computer vision with the, with the retroreflective around the goal has been a very big part for teams trying to align to the goal. Have you learned something or do you feel confident in your shooter's ability or your driver's ability that you don't, you don't think you need that, that aid? Yeah. So we, uh, our drivers have generally been very strong. And so hopefully with this camera setup, we can line up at least with the driver. And so we don't have to rely on uh, the limelight to be doing everything for us. It's the skilled drivers. And because we're playing on, more um, aligning with the the panels in the center section and like smashing into those and then doing the balls, we shouldn't have to do much aligning in teleop. And that's just for consistency. And we don't think it's worth putting in the time and effort to try to get it to shoot from further um, back places. Got it. So, so you're, you're, if I'm trying to remember this, for, you know, we talked to a bunch of different teams, you're, you're still planning on shooting like right up against the fender, like right up against the goal every shot. So you're saying, Hey, if our bumper is square on that goal, 
what is there to align to, right? Yeah, that's a that's a that's I love that I yeah. love the, the fender shop for that exactly that reason it simplifies the whole world. Do you anticipate an autonomous um, driving forward to that fender to, to hit the to hit that shot, or do you have any plans for trying to get any extra balls during autonomous and then moving forward? Yeah, so in autonomous, our main priority is time efficiency. So if we're wasting time moving up to the fender and then shooting, um, you know that's a waste of time. So what we want to do in autonomous. Instead of hitting a bumper, we'll have um, very clear set points that the robot can go to, and we know we, uh, we can consistently hit those shots. Okay, so using a little bit just more dead reckoning, not computer vision, but just you know where the robot is on the field, and you've tuned that very specific shot, and because you're not being bumped or anything, you're just, you guys are going to be able to figure it out. Yeah, and we also have a Path Weaver demo um, that we can show. Then, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we've been characterizing the robot, uh, as you saw last time. And so mm -hmm. now we can get uh, very precise paths and have it start and end in the exact locations that we want it to. So if you can see the video here, we're going to start on one side of the trash can, move around it, stop for a second, and then end up at the same spot that we started. And we're using Pathweaver with their built-in RAM set controller to do this in WPR mode. It's very cool. Um, when you're testing this video um, on this, are you are you testing on carpet or are you testing on tile? Yeah, so we characterize it on carpet, um, but the luckily the RAM set and PID controller can manage both on carpet and tile. But um, for the competition season, we will want to be sticking with carpet. Okay. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that like I, I see a lot of videos of a lot of teams like driving their robots down the hallway and testing on those types of things. And if you don't practice on carpet, um, you're going to be in for an interesting experience the first time you put your robot on the field. But uh, no, it sounds like you have that well under control. Um, so can we can we talk about the elephant in the room here for a second? The fact that we're staring at like in the in the lower screen here, it looks like we are staring at a powder coated like CAD matching robot behind you at the beginning of week four. So can, can, can we can we take a look at that robot? Well, um, it's not powder coated. We spray painted it. Well, it's a special type of spray paint. <laughs> yeah, it is pink. Yeah, so I can go through some of the sort of changes we've made since last time, uh, design-wise. Um, so the biggest like sort of architectural change overall, I guess, uh, is we switched to the sort of an S profile shooter instead of the back and up that we were going for. So the L sort of um, uh, arrangement. Uh, and so basically, this lets us simplify our feed path and it also moves our shooter back further to make the uh, shot from directly underneath the fender easier. So we can eliminate those two vertical rollers that we had, just stick with the single central roller. And uh, since the shooter is further back, we can shoot at a less intense angle uh, and still be able to make that shot from directly under the upper hub. Um, we've made a few small changes to the rest of the robot. Uh, so the climber, we switched our final stage, our final reduction to chain instead of gears, just so that it's the chain's going to be better at managing dynamic loads. We were afraid that the uh, your teeth might shear off. Um, we've also added a number of sensors. So we have limit switches uh, and hard stops for the climber. So we have limit switches to tell us when we've hit max extension on that, max rotation of the arms. And we have limit switches on these upper, like carabining claws, to tell us when those uh, have flipped and are ready to the the other claws are ready to lower it back down onto them. Um, we also added encoders to this, so just a bunch of sensors, a lot of redundancy because uh, we don't want our robot falling off the poles this year. <laughs> yeah, I think that's always a goal. You want to keep your uh, wheels on the ground, and you don't want it to uh, gravity to. Uh take out all your hard work. But yeah, integrating sensors early on is something that it's great to see. Um, that's all one of the trickiest things about like robot design is that like you build the mechanism trying to add that thing later on. But it sounds like you're really well thinking out, not just mechanically how it works, but also how you plan to integrate controls on this. And that's really awesome. So Absolutely. let me ask you guys, like as Greg mentioned, the robot that's behind you right now, 
like what is that actually then? Is that a something that was just built from a prior CAD? Is it last year's robot modified? Like tell us a little bit more what that is. And then the you mentioned the relationship to the CAD, but I'm just truly curious what the actual robot behind you is. Yeah, so this is the same robot you see in the CAD. Uh, so the frame is complete and we're uh, sort of in the final steps of uh, having the robot completely prepared for programmers to take over. Uh, so, like Greg said, we have it painted in a nice pink shade. Uh, and, yeah, basically we're just finalizing, uh, like, the intake, and then we're going to have uh, the programmers take over and mess around with autonomous and all that stuff. I, I love the whole theme, by the way, because last time we had you on, you, uh, Julia, you showed off the T-shirt that you're printing right for it, and then uh, this whole 80s scene that goes along with the – color of the robot like the the little uh purple sock thing and stuff on yeah tell us more about this, this is so cool um they're just like drawers we had just like lying around so <laughs> why not what what is the what's the word on it say it's a little bit hard to see on that icon um so that's just like a test we're just trying to figure out what stickers we want to put on our robot so that's just the same design that's on our t-shirts gotcha so we'll probably have something similar to that. It's not the final version. It's just the test. I, I I love it. I think it's so cool. I always think of like there's a TikTok that's been around for a while where it's like the the 80s people dancing with their leg kicks up in the air and stuff like that. And I really think you need to have like a reveal video that is something similar to that with that 80s theme music going on. I think it would be really cool. Our, our reveal video will be great. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so with this robot um, almost put together um, – how much uh, practical testing have you been able to do so far in terms of like validating the CAD design? Have like, have you hung and taken it all the way to the traversal or are you still kind of in that mid stage of validation? Yeah. So uh, the climb hasn't been tested yet. Theoretically it works on paper. It works, but we haven't done any real world testing of that yet. I think we're hoping to do that by this Saturday. Um, somebody's parents volunteering to build the hangar for us. So that's when we'll have a chance to, hang on that and test everything out related to that. Uh, in terms of the whole sort of S-shaped uh, indexer system, we did test that out and we tested out a very similar shooter to ensure that we could make the shot from directly under the hub and that the balls fed nicely. Uh, we're running half an inch of compression throughout the serialization uh, sort of S-shape and then in the shooter we're running one and a half inches of compression and that was all uh, found through testing. I want to take a couple of questions that have uh, come in from chat. I know we'll kind of jump a little bit on this, but I'll take the first one that's closest to relevance. Uh, uh, M. Uh, Chris Bot asks, uh, who does all the CAD in your team? Uh, that's me. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, uh, I work with a group of two or three uh, newer students who have also been learning, but most of this CAD uh, I've done. Very cool. Um, and, and I don't mean to jump back in the program, but something to bring up from an earlier question I want to ask. Uh, Chicken Skunk 100 asking, uh, are there any tips for mounting the limelight that you learned from at all, Diego or Ethan? Yeah, so actually this is an issue that we've been trying to work with. Um, the ports on the bottom of the limelight do have some clearance issues. So make sure that um, when you're mounting the limelight to have a lot of clearance under there, especially we have a 3D printed swivel mount um, that we attach to the frame. So like, especially with that swivel mount, if you want to turn the camera, uh, be careful with those USB connections because they could get sheared off. Yeah, I would also add to that, uh, we do have a swivel mount on that robot. That was like our prototyping practice robot. I would recommend on your actual robot to have something completely static. Uh, find what angle works for you and stick with it. Uh, I think that if you try to mess around with actuation or adjustment, I think that can lead you to a lot of issues. Well, we do have a few more minutes left. So, Chad, if you have any other questions for 1339, feel free to ask uh, in chat. Uh, anything else on your robot uh, that you want to kind of highlight or showcase or any other team progress you want to talk about at all? Uh, I don't think so. We could do like a demo of the ball path through the robot if that'd be interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> don't hold that out on us. <laughs> Obviously, we want to see that. <laughs> Is that better? So uh, we're missing the intake right now, but basically the balls would get rammed up into these belts, 
uh, fed inward and then back. And then this wheel at the back would bring them up through. And we have rear flywheels and front flywheels. And that would just feed out the robot. <laughs> Awesome. Looks, I mean, it, it just it looks great. Like I, I am in awe that you are this far along um, in week four. I think that you know this is this is one of those things that whenever the further along you can be, the earlier it is. The more time you have for programming, the more time you have for driver practice, and it's just going to set you up for a really great season. Um, I guess are you guys are you building two robots like just a real robot and a practice robot, or just one robot for this season? Just um, one. one, yeah. Just one, yeah. So I mean, it, that, that's even it's even better. So like when you build one robot, making sure you've now got those extra time to, to practice is even better. Uh, which uh, which is, uh, week is your first competition? Week two. Yeah. Week two. All right. So you even have even a little bit more time than everybody else. So yeah, yeah this is uh, I think y'all are in a really good place for a, a great successful season and. You know, kudos to all your team for all the hard work that you guys have done in the past uh, few weeks. Okay. Yeah, you guys are attending Orange County. Actually, there's 50 50 shot. I'm going to be at Orange County Regional. So hopefully, uh, get to see you guys play. That'd be really cool. So, uh, yeah. do, you want, do you want to take one more uh, question coming in from Chad asking, uh, what are your work hours like in, in a typical week or on the robot? Um, so, like, how often are you actually there uh, in person working on stuff? So, in a typical week, we have, we work 40, four days a week. So, we work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturdays. And our Monday through Wednesday is generally after school, so like 3.30 to around 6. This week we've extended a little later just because we're trying to get all the mechanical stuff done. And then Saturdays we do 10 to 4, which normally runs over. But that's about our typical work week. And then sometimes we have kids come in during lunch and stuff. Sure. And they're all curious to work on it. But that's just about our hours. Well, before we wrap up here, just want to double check in anything else that we want to cover, or are we all set for for so far? I don't think so. That's about it. Per perfect. Well, uh, Angel Alex, uh, awesome to see your progress once again, uh, and can't wait to see uh, even further as you get in the next couple of weeks. Uh, be of course before your uh, week two event. So very much uh, for looking forward to uh, seeing what you have to offer, and really appreciate you taking time. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.